Welcome everybody to the fireside chat at the Zero Conference in Vienna. My name is Regine Gessner. I'm with HGBS, which belongs to the Hilfsgemeinschaft der Blinden und Sehschwachen in Austria. And I'm working for IAAP DACH, which is the regional chapter for the German speaking countries for the IAAP. And what is IAAP? I have brought my colleague Christopher who will tell you a little bit more about it. Christopher, first of all, I was wondering where is the fireside, the fire, the fireplace here? I, I'm not seeing a fireplace, <laughs> but it's actually pretty warm in Vienna yeah, right absolute. now. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Christopher, please. Yeah, my name is Christopher Lee, and I'm with IWP. I'm the managing director, and I have known Regine for a couple of years now. And we're here today to talk to you a little bit about um, building accessibility community throughout the globe. Um, I am the managing director, and um, um, it just is great to be here today. Do you want me to tell you a little bit about IWP? Yeah. Right. <laughs> we founded the German um, speaking chapter in 2020. We started with eight members, and um, our lead in the chapter is T Systems, which is a, a daughter company of Deutsche Telekom. We have eight members, that was the foundation board, and these members are from um, disability organizations, from higher education, from the public service, and from the private sector. And of course, the representatives are from all the three countries, Switzerland, Austria, and Germany. And uh, when we started the chapter and to build it up, uh, our major first task was to uh, translate the certifications of IAAP or two of the certifications into the German language because this was the barrier number one was the language because everything was in English up to that moment and uh, so uh, we have built a working group that did the translation for the certifications and so end of 2021 we could do the first exams in German language and in the last year we had growing figure of people who made the certification. Regine's done a great job with her, her board. So let me tell you a little bit about IWAP. IWAP was started in 2014 and um, the idea of it was to um, a group of people coming together to look at how individuals with accessibility knowledge um, were going to come together and, and work together to actually try to find jobs in the field mostly from the IT community, but it was brought together not only with nonprofit organizations, but private industry, as well as um, grassroots disability organizations that came around the table and said, hey, we need something. And they had focus groups, did a little research out there to see what was out there, but what they found out overall was that the, there wasn't really an associa association out there to actually support organizations that are looking for individuals that had credentials. These are certifications. And uh, Regine talked a little bit about that just a second ago. So IWP is focused on building certifications for individuals to um, test their skills and their knowledge around accessibility. And these certifications range from a, a broad range certification called the CPAC, which talks about disabilities, which talks about universal design, assistive technology, as well as governing laws. The second certification we have is the web accessibility certification. And that is more technical. So where the CPAC, the broad certification, is very broad in knowledge. The technical certifications, like the web accessibility certification, is very deep in a sense. And you need three to five years of knowledge to actually be able to take the exam. The next certification we have is a built environment certification. And there's three levels to it. There's a level one for beginners, intermediate, and expert. Um, and then we also have a, um, a document accessibility certification. And that's been around for two years now. It's relatively new. It is technical also, so it's kind of deep. And um, th it's going pretty well, though. All the certifications are growing. We have a membership base of around 5,000 members throughout the globe. The DOC chapter is one of the, the great chapters we have, but we also have others also. Thank you, Christopher, for this um, um, explanation. And there's a question, how can IAAP help building an accessible professional community in countries or regions? Yeah, so IWP is part of the G3ICT network. So we're a division um, of the Global Initiative for Inclusive ICT, which has been around since 2006. Um, it came out of the UN Convention for the Rights with Disabilities. Um, it has a, a depth around policy in regards to 
uh, countries around the globe looking at improving policies and procurement and governance and HR and so on. So it's in our core, being IWP, that we are out there trying to do the same thing with certifications. But there's a lot of challenges with the certifications. As you mentioned, Regine, the translations of these certifications can be um, tricky and it's very expensive. To actually produce a certification, you have to pull together a group of subject matter experts. And this group has to be a, a global representation of, of experts. And they get together and they come up with a body of knowledge. And from that body of knowledge, it lists out the different domains. And from those domains, we do a job task analysis. And that is a global job task analysis where we actually lock down that these certifications are appropriate and they meet the, the standards for the, the subject matter experts in our certification committee. So in order to do that, um, to grow this, this group, um, we have to have chapters, and the doc being one of those chapters, that not only helps translate these exams in the long run, but also the professional education pieces to it. So we are doing that through growing our chapters um, throughout the globe and, and really trying to um, bring the certification to them. Yeah, thank you. I, I just can add on that the, 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 the chapter in the region is very important because of, as you said, barrier number one is the language. Um, and many people in the German-speaking countries, they understand maybe English or can a little bit, but they cannot, they're not able to do everything or understand everything in English or talk in English. And they need the German language for their daily work, the, um, ec the experts for um, digital accessibility. So I think that is a, a very one of the big advantages if you grow or if we grow regional chapters um, and also cultural specialities that we have so we can in our chapter more we know how Germans are, how Austrians, Switzerland, so we can you know tailor it a little bit. A, yeah. a little bit. Um, so what is the benefit for organizational or individual members when they come to IAAP? So as, as Regine mentioned, we have not only individual members, and these are individual members that are taking the certification. You don't have to be an individual member to take the certification. And then we have organizational members. And the organizational members are companies, um, it could be a private industry, government, um, academia, that come in and they, they want to come up with a strategic plan in order to grow accessibility within their organization. So in order to do that, we work with them on strategically on coming up with a plan of how to, to train and how to certify um, their employees um, in different areas of accessibility that matches our certifications. So that's one of the primary, I think, benefits. And through that is um, if you become a member, you get access to, um, to our webinar series. You get access to our learning management sy system that has courses on it. And then obviously you get discounts on the certification. The most important thing to keep with the certifications is that um, a professional association is very different. It's not a certificate that you're getting. It's an actual certification. And that there's a big difference between those two, a certificate and a certification. With a professional certification, you have to maintain credits or professional education um, each year in order to keep up the trends, whether it's technical or with our CPAC. So that's some of the benefits that you actually get um, with becoming a member. I think can add from my experience with the DACH chapter, uh, when we have new members or interested um, uh, persons coming into our webinars or contact us, the networking is, is the number one point that they can exchange with other experts or with people who just start to in their country in the company to build up the accessibility, and so on. the networking is really the one big big um, um, point, um, and I was. Uh, I have another question that's also interesting, maybe for uh, many people who uh, hear us. What are the next chapters? And we have the Dach chapter, we have the Nordic chapter, the UK chapter. So what are the other chapters around in planning? So we, we have, um, we're in talks with China, and we'll be having a China chapter in the future, we believe. We were hoping to launch it this year. So we're still working out the details of that. We had in Russia on, on the, the, the board, but that has been paused right now. And we're looking very strongly at a Canadian chapter because French is, is something that we've been asked to translate all languages to as well as a professional education. So we see, we see those. We also have been talking to Australia um, as, as possibly being um, a chapter there. So it's, it's a growing network. 
I think the, the key is with the chapters and is, is that we find the right lead agency, like the doc chapter with T-Systems. Um, we want to make sure that the agency is committed to the mission and the cause of growing the accessibility community. So I think that's a tricky place sometimes to be. Is there a kind of a basic model to create a chapter? Because this yeah. question came up in, my, in some talks that I already had here. Yeah, it's a great question, Regine. Um, so in the past, you know, it's, it was with organizations that were interested in coming in. They were passionate about the cause, but it's changed over time. So we now have a discovery phrase. So we, they have an application that they fill out. Um, we look at the, the group of individuals and organizations that are tied to what they want to be the chapters. So it needs to be very diverse. It can't just be private industry. It needs to be academia, government, like the doc chapter has done. And then we go through a discovery phase. And the discovery phase will allow us between six months to a year where we try to build up synergy within the region. Um, and that's what we're deciding right now in Canada. And that point will tell us if they're the right organization to be a chapter. Okay, thank you very much, Christopher. Um, I think our time is over uh, quickly. Um, so if you want to need uh, have more information about us, then you can find us here at the Zero Conference. We have a stand in the lobby, and we are here around teams from the IAP, uh, different chapters, and from the United, from the USA are here around. So uh, we are happy to talk to you and get in touch. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll have a very short summary of what was just uh, talked about. And this is one of the very innovative things we're doing here on Zero Project. Um, making the ITC world more accessible for everyone. And we heard that we have the DACH chapter, so Germany, Austria and Switzerland, bringing formerly English-speaking um, education, where you get the certificate or even professional certi certification. Um, into the German-speaking world. And um, we now know that the goal of the whole project is to bring inclusive uh, information and communication technology to the world. And just at the end, we heard the next chapters you're trying to build are, for instance, in Canada, to come up with French and um, also China. And the key is to have good partners, like we have here on stage, uh, a good agency who makes sure that the networking part can take place so that all the know-how comes together and people have a place to meet. And then there are two ways. You can ha either have a broad education on the topic or go deeper into technical education. And with all that, the world will be more accessible. Nice job. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. <laughs>